Fuck you. Check this out. Bro. Nah. <laughs> Man, I need to retire. Hello there. Today, I have a bit of a special video idea. We are going to scan the screen for images in C Sharp. That's right, you will learn how to get the coordinates of a picture on the screen, then draw an ESB box around it. I can remember how this can be used in various scenarios, and I hope that it can be of use. This method will not detect variations of a picture, only the exact of the original, so one-to-one -one size. We are not using anything complicated here. The Discord is included in the description, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Welcome to today's showcase. I will show you guys how we can code our very own image detection tool. So let's say, for example, we want to find this picture right here on screen, my YouTube character picture. What we can do is we can use Windows Shift S to copy the part of this screen, the face, for example. Then save this picture, copy the path. Then we paste it inside of our program. So we take the path and paste it here. And then we run it. And we get this little menu. But also it detects the picture on screen. We get the coordinates and we also get a little red box. So if we would move this picture somewhere outside of the bounds of this box, it will find it again and print out the new location. So this is how you picture detect or detect pictures in C sharp. I hope you enjoy. So like usual, we will create a new project and it will be a C sharp console app. We will use the .NET 8 framework. We will not start coding in the main CS file. However, we will remove the template text and then add a new class which is called uh, Rectangle 2D. This will hold information about the beginning and end of the picture that we find. Next up will be our image detection class. This will hold all of the logic behind the iteration through the screen and so on. We will have two class variables, scan start and scan end. The, this is for the scanning area. Then we will Simply create a simple constructor with these values given when we create an instance. What we will do next is to create a scan for image method. This is the main method to find our picture. And we will have the parameters bitmap, vector2 and vector2. This is because we want to find an image in the form of a bitmap, then the start and end of the scan. The next thing we will do is to create a bitmap the size of our scanning area, then copy the graphics from our screen. We do perform some math here, but it's only necessary if you might have a different scanning area than the whole screen. So just know that we get the area from these calculations by taking the end position and subtracting it with the beginning position and so on. After that, we will iterate through the screenshot to find a pixel that belongs to our picture. So we go through the x-axis and the y-axis. Now that we get each pixel within the screenshot area, we can check if it belongs to the image, but we will create another function for that because otherwise it will be uh, just a bunch of nested for loops. So we will create this next method that will return a boolean, true or false, if the image is inside of that area. This will take two bitmaps, one of being the image, then the screenshot, then the x and y at the location that we started to compare the sequence and image. So if we check each pixel, 
do unassed for loop again. We can check them if they have the same pixels and then just return false if there wasn't a match and true if there was a match. Now that we have our method to tell if the picture is inside of that area, we can just call it at the iteration in our scan for image loop. If there was a match, we will return the coordinates of that match. We would have to remember to add the coordinates of the start and then plus the iteration to get to the location of the image, but also add the size to the end to get the full size. And at the end, we will return if there was no found, so just an empty rectangle. We're actually done now with the, the image scanning part, but we will also want to add some visuals to get that cool rectangle at the image and a simple text that displays what we found. For that, we will use clickable transparent overlay. All credit goes to them for their creation. I am not the creator of this NuGet package. When we have installed the package, we will add a new class, a renderer class that will cover all of the drawings and shapes and so on. This renderer class will inherit the overlay and because we inherit the overlay, we will have to implement the render function. Here is the place we will draw the things, create our menu and so on. Now for the overlay, we will have a draw list pointer. We will use this to add the shapes to draw. And we will also have a list of the rectangles we're supposed to draw. That's it. We will create a small little window with imgui begin menu and then we will create a method called draw overlay. This method will create another window on top of the menu and set it to the screen size. So you will have to set it to your screen size and it will begin at 00. zero. After that we will set the features of this window to make it clickable and so on and uh, not to disturb us there is probably a better way than doing this so i hope there's someone smart in the comments who can provide that, that solution so we don't have to do all of this stuff but until we have that solution i'll continue doing this now that we have the overlay on top of the screen we can create a new function called draw boxes. This function will take the draw list from our current window, which is the overlay, and then loop through all of the matches of the pictures and then draw the rectangles on top of the images. We will use the match properties, the beginning and end, to define the rectangle. We will also use a color. I will pick red, that's the most common one when using boxes, I suppose. You can use whatever color you want. You have a free choice there. The values are RGBA, so the first one would be one since that's red. So we will change the for each loop to use the matches list. And then I forgot to add the label here for the picture found and the coordinates. Don't worry about it, we will add it later. Instead, we added a new function add match here. We will use this from our main code in the program.cs to add rectangles that we will draw. So we will check first if they have matching properties like the begin or origin x and origin y. If that's the case, we will discard them since they are just duplicates. Otherwise, we will add them to the list and uh, let our renderer draw them. If 
Finally, we will add the function call at the end draw boxes in our render function. Let's try our image detector out by going into the program.cs and we will be using system.drawing and system.numerics. We will create a new bitmap with the path of your file. Okay, so I want to find this picture right here of my beautiful background or this uh, sweat character right here. So what I can do is I can Windows Shift S to screenshot a part of this. Let's screenshot this part. We will take the path of this, so save it. So when you have the file opener with your picture open, select it, then right click. You can copy as path. Click on that. Then you go inside of your application. Go to the image to find variable, which we gave a sample before, but here you can control V to paste it and you'll get something like this, but with your username. So it should not say your username here, it should be your actual username here or the actual path. Then add this at, then C sharp will know that we're handling a path. This way it will know. So you will have to get your own path here. You can't use mine, then it will not work, sadly. After we have defined the path, we will create two variables for the start and end of the scan. It will start at 00, zero and end at your screen width and height. Mine is your usual 1080, so that's what I, I will write. Now to start the rendering of our application, we would have to create a new instance of the renderer class and then use the start.wait method. After that, we create a new instance of the image detector as well. Then we put our start and end values instead of it as arguments. I forgot to add our overload function in our image detector class, which will be the scan for image and now only use a bitmap. So we don't have to write the coordinates of the start and end scanning points so again. Let's create the actual loop now. So we will create a while loop that's set to always true, so it always runs. And then we will search for one image by using our scan for image method. If we have a match or the origin isn't set to vector.0, we will add the matches to the match list or the matches list. At the end of the loop, we will sleep for half a second or 500 milliseconds. You can adjust this to however you want. Like I said before, I forgot to add the text. So let's go back to the draw boxes function and add a text at the left corner of the image or where the image was found. This will take the coordinates of the match origin x and then the match end y. We will also take the color black instead of red, so it will be the RGBA0001. Then we have the text, which is the picture found, and then the coordinates. Alright, so if we want to try our application now, remember to change from your username to your actual path on this string so you don't run into errors and we can hit run and minimize the console window then we can see that it successfully detected our picture in the middle of the screen here are the coordinates you can do whatever you want with that and uh, we've completed our task so uh, Good job if you followed all of the steps till here and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.